Greetings, this is July 31st, and looking at the NASA's firm system, there are a lot of hot spots out there. Uh, this is smoke from yesterday, and we can see it's moving from the southwest to the northeast, filling up the eastern half of the province and stretching from Manning Park all the way to Quesnel. We'll be looking at the infrared making a 24 hour comparison. Uh, I'm not seeing a lot of dramatic expansion but I am seeing hot spots are a little brighter a uh, little more volatility on the edges of these fire perimeters let's jump in and go to Flat Lake this is northwest of 70 mile house west of Green Lake and Highway 97 this is infrared from yesterday and now today the northern flank of the fire has bunched up on the eastern side and the southern flank of the fire has bunched up on the western side. So it's almost like there's two different wind patterns moving through this fire zone. Let's zoom in on the southern flank. We see Alberta Lake to the lower right hand side of the screen. Meadow Lake Road kind of runs through the center of the screen on a diagonal yesterday and now today. There has been movement slightly southwest. Uh, it appears to approach the northwestern edge of Alberta Lake, uh, not touching it. Keep in mind these MODIS and VIIRS infrared may be off position and they may be obscured by smoke and cloud. Let's move slightly west. We can see Meadow Lake in the lower left-hand portion of the screen. This is yesterday and now today. It looks like less random intensity, more controlled signatures, and uh, those furthest southwest modus indications are right up against Meadow Lake Road. Moving eastward, this is the Sparks Lake Fire. We're looking at Chris Creek and Bonaparte on the right-hand side of the screen, Hyheum and that cluster over on the left-hand side of the screen. This is yesterday and now today. Definitely more intensity, seeing some of those controlled diagonal infrared. Uh, looking at Young Lake, a little busier and more eastward movement up there. Also, uh, to the east of Hyheum Lake, that cluster has grown considerably. We've moved over to Canham Lake. We're looking at infrared clusters from yesterday and now today. Uh, there are a few more in there. There looks to be a bit of a western push at Tawil. Uh, that's at the lower portion of the screen center. Uh, zooming into the Canham area, this is yesterday. And now today, definitely seeing more infrared hot spots. Uh, they appear to be within existing areas, but you'll want to check the ground report. Go to the BC Wildfire link in the description and find out what the situation for these individual fire zones are. We've moved south. We're now looking at the Tremont Creek Fire. This is east of Ashcroft, east of Cache Creek, uh, south of Wallachine, and now right on the western edge of Tungqua Provincial Park. Very aggressive fire behavior according to the situation report and there has been considerable eastern movement on these western breezes so uh, do consider your access and what's between you and that fire line if you are in any point east of this fire. I apologize if we're moving really fast. It's important for you to zoom in and look at your local area. My time constraints are a little tight this morning. We're looking at the area around Lytton. Uh, that's right at center of the screen and the fire that's moved eastward uh, towards Spence's Bridge, top right hand side of the screen. And now it rolls into the infrared from today. So glowing a little brighter, a few more infrared heat detections and down at the south portion that is adjacent to Kiefer's between Boston Bar and Lytton, that appears to have grown eastward. Just zooming in a bit to the Lytton fire to look at the change from yesterday and today. We're now moving over to the White Rock Lake fire. Uh, zooming in and we can see Falkland to the top right side of the screen. Monty Lake is at the top of the screen. This is yesterday's infrared and now today. I'm not seeing any expansion eastward or northwards. I'm seeing a lot of what appears to be controlled infrared signatures. Uh, it is looking quite active on all perimeters of this fire. 
We've moved to the shoe swap. We're looking at Adams Lake at the top of the screen, the Momich area, and uh, Sycamus near the bottom of the screen. And now today, very slight movement eastwards at the Sycamus fire at the bottom of the screen. Everything else seems to be aging in place. Uh, there could be some, some jostling there on the east and west perimeters. This is the Mabel Lake area. Uh, Sugar Lake at the bottom of the screen, North Okanagan yesterday and today. Definitely some movement eastward. Uh, those infrared spots are spreading out and they could be following a wind pattern in this area. We've now moved to the southern interior of British Columbia. Nelson is just left of center of the screen. Uh, Kokanee Lake is just to the right of center on the screen. Lower Arrow Lake is on the left hand side of the screen and uh, we can see the fire east of Kimberley on the far right hand side of the screen. And here is today's infrared and we can see a slight push eastward within all these fire perimeters. Uh, that intensity has moved over to the eastern perimeter or eastern flank. We're zooming into the area just to the northwest of Nelson. Uh, this is yesterday's infrared and now today's. And again, we see how that intensity in these hot spots moved to the eastern flank. We're now looking at the South Okanagan. The fire east of Okanagan Falls is at the top of the screen. The fire east of Oliver and Osuyas is at the bottom of the screen. And now we're looking at today. There's some more intensity as it reaches the top of the Okanagan Plateau. I'm also seeing a lot of controlled infrared signatures in there. So wildfire crews may be doing a control strategy. And we'll have to watch this fire's growth. It may be susceptible to southwest winds pushing it northeastwards in these higher elevations. I've zoomed in to the Oliver Osuyas fire. We can see Mount Baldy ski area to the right of the screen. And we can also see some of these forested blocks that the fire has made its way into. We're looking at the Okanagan Falls infrared. And again, it too has made its way up onto this plateau. This is the Manning Park area. We're at East Gate. Princeton is just to the north uh, in, around Brenda Mines and now today's infrared. There was some expansion northwards. I'm also seeing a lot of controlled diagonal patterning. There may be control strategies at work. It looks like the southeastern corner of this fire has approached almost to Highway 3. And one more fire just to take a quick look at. This is infrared from today. This is south of Chilliwack Lake across the U.S. border. It does look like there are some control strategies uh, running in a horizontal line east and west. Something to watch out for as forest conditions are remaining quite dry. We're looking at a screenshot from a missionary bush pilot. Uh, this is another YouTube channel. This pilot flies to very remote locations in Papua New Guinea. And in this video, which I'll link below, they're showing how they use windy to uh, gain weather forecasts flying into some of these remote locations. And that's why I use Windy, because it is reliable and it gives a composite of all the weather station data and then displays it on the screen. And what we're seeing in southern BC are subdued winds, but a lot of different directions. They're coming from the east over the Rockies, and there is also some southern winds moving up into the Kamloops area. Meanwhile, around the White Rock Lake area to the south of Kamloops, winds are coming from the east. And hopefully that slows down the fire's movement and aids wildfire crews. There's also winds coming from the east at the top of that Okanagan Plateau. So hopefully those slow down the fire's movement uh, to the northeast. And I'm seeing very subtle southeastern breeze uh, moving in the north Shushwap. And finally, up around the Flat Lake Fire from the west, six kilometers an hour. And if we look ahead to the forecast, there could be significant gusts around 5 p.m. coming from the west. And that should taper off uh, maybe a bit of a wind shift and uh, slowing wind speeds overnight. There are weather patterns moving in, uh, clouds, and that could cause a lot of variation in wind direction. 
I am still getting alerts from the Flat Lake Fire on that southern flank. I'm subscribed at NASA's firm's fire email alert. Uh, you can go to the site in the link below in the description. Uh, it's on the left hand side of the screen. Use the drop down menu, sign up for fire alerts, and then you'll be notified if there's a hot spot in your selected area. Those new hot spots appear to be in around the Meadow Lake Road area. And each one of these fire zones deserves far more attention than I can put in on one video. So please do go to the links below. Zoom into your local area. You want to know where the fire is, what direction the wind is going, what's between you and the fire zone, and what your access routes are. So check the links below. And thank you very much for watching. Be safe out there. Keep your nose to the breeze.